you have no idea how many bad limitation sections I have seen. But why does this happen so often? It is perhaps that we're too used to presenting ourselves in the best possible way. When we meet somebody important, we dress better than when we are alone at home. And we certainly try to impress others. Imagine going on a date. Would you brag off about how bad you are? You wouldn't want to leave a bad impression. Then, why is it different when we talk about research? Why we should never speak only about our strengths, but admit our weaknesses? And how admitting weaknesses would actually improve the quality of your research? If you're interested in these questions, then this video is for you. As a new researcher, you are often likely to try to sweep some dirt under the carpet, hide the limitations of your work, present it as more important than it actually is. And I get it, it's your baby. It's the result of your hard work. You feel some pride in it and you don't want to tarnish it. You want everybody to recognize how good of a research work you've done and how you can change the world. However, as you're sweeping that dirt under the carpet, remember that your research supervisor is equivalent to a professional research cleaner who examines every corner of your house in order to find even the slightest of dust. No problem, you may say. I'll clean up everything. But this is not actually how it works. Imagine that just you had a big messy party in your house and now you have only a limited time to fix everything up, to clean everything up. Of course, if you only have two hours, it would be impossible to fix everything. It would be impossible to clean everything. So the same analogy can be applied on your research dissertation or research study. You only have limited time and therefore you should only focus on the sticking points. You should only try to address the most significant challenges. For example, it's very important to make sure that your methodology is aligned with your research objectives. It's also important to clearly define the sample population to understand who you need to collect the data from in order to address your hypothesis or research questions. Nevertheless, there is some smaller perhaps issues that may arise. For example, you may start off with being very optimistic about the quantity and the quality of the data that you would collect. You envisage that you would distribute thousands of questionnaires and get at least hundreds back. And this is sometimes not the case. And it's particularly even more challenging when you are dealing with interviews, when you're trying to secure interviewees for your work. You may assume that you can get access to top executives from big multinational companies. And later on, you would understand that this is more difficult done than said. Therefore, at some point, you come to, to your senses and you realize that you cannot collect as much data as you have imagined. So this is clearly something that you can put as a limitation of your work. And it would be understandable that you cannot spend ages of trying to secure access to these people. So you could put this as something that needs to be considered. Not reaching the sample size that you have anticipated, you can get away with. However, not matching your research design with the objectives of the study or trying to collect data from people who are irrelevant to the hypothesis or the question that you're posing in your work is a big issue. This is a sticking point that certainly you need to address. Let's look at the following scenario so that you better understand what could be a valid limitation to add to the limitation section. Let's imagine that you're interested in studying the behavior of students in regards to a particular phenomenon. For example, how many hours a week it takes students to prepare for their classes. You went and asked participants, you collected data, only to find out that the data you have collected may be slightly biased. This could be the case if you collected data closer to the School of Informatics. Naturally, most of your respondents were part of this school. This cannot give you enough information on the studying habits of the broader student population. The results you may have may be skewed. There may be some bias because these people may have different study patterns than people from other schools. 
Let's assume that you were to go to the library instead. And let's assume that people from all schools go to this library. Then your sample can be more representative. Therefore, you wouldn't have the bias of interviewing more people from the School of Informatics. Nevertheless, let's get back to this imaginary data collection in front of the library. This has limitations on its own. For example, the data you collect may be biased because people who go to libraries, on average, are expected to spend more time preparing for their classes. They go to library after all. So this scenario is here to show you that all research has limitations. Therefore, it's important to address these to the best of your abilities, but if you cannot, if the data collection has already finished, then you can get away by admitting that the work has limitations. Ultimately, every research has limitations, so don't be afraid to admit your limitations in the methodology and the conclusion chapters of your dissertation. But wait, why should you mention your limitations twice? Well, no, you don't mention them twice, but you should mention relevant limitations in the relevant chapters. For example, if your limitations are purely methodological, you can have a separate section within the methodology chapter. Any issues with data collection, data analysis, etc., they can be mentioned in there. Another limitation that is related to methodology may be the use of qualitative research. You would know that you cannot generalize the findings of your research if you're using qualitative research. This means that the students' learning habits you find in one country may be completely different from the habits students have of the same major but in a different country. You just cannot generalize because of the qualitative methods it doesn't allow you. You need to make sure that you add this to your limitation section. And if you're using quantitative methodology, you also have a limitation to mention. You may be able to generalize, but since you're relying on more heavy statistical data, you may not be able to find out some rich data that may influence the results. For example, a qualitative researcher may find that students from a particular location spend more time studying because of the weather. Maybe the weather is bad. If you change the location, if you put that same student in a different location, then maybe their learning habits would change. Maybe they would spend less hours on their assignments or class preparation. So the general practice is to put all limitations related to the methodology where they belong in the methodology chapter. Then, what type of limitations do we put in the conclusion chapter? The limitations you put in the conclusion chapter are related to the nature of the research you do. For example, you may find out that you need to pay more attention to another variable or control that given variable as it may change your findings altogether. We mentioned how weather can change the habits of students. The fact that you didn't control for this is a limitation you may include this in the conclusion chapter. However, don't label your limitation section within the conclusion chapter as limitation. Instead, label it as future research. I know, this sounds confusing, but actually it's not. Let me explain. The type of limitations you add to the conclusion chapter, these are typically not actual problems of your work, it's just admitting that your work is not complete showing the reader of your research that there is a lot more to explore and research out there, and then actively inviting others to step in and explore the topic further by paying attention to what you have missed. This is a great way of admitting the limitations while also presenting yourself as a leader who invites others to join in that fascinating research field or fascinating avenue of research, if you wish. There are some other limitations that you may consider adding to the methodology chapter of your work. The first thing is the age of the data. Sometimes you collect secondary data, which has been collected by other people many years ago. And maybe the data is very rich. Maybe the data has been collected from even multiple countries. And it will definitely help you to address your question. Nevertheless, just the fact that this data is old is a limitation because the phenomenon may have changed and you may find new results if you are to collect the data from scratch. Another potential limitation, again, to be included in the methodology is related to how you collect the data. 
For example, if you ask people to refer to their previous experiences or something they did in the past, then they would be likely to first not remember all the details and second, to glorify their own actions. Perhaps they would like to present themselves as capable individuals who made the right decision back then. Or the other extreme is if they would like your compassion or your pity, they may present the situation as much more difficult than what it actually was at the time. So data collection can be tricky. Typically, when you deal with sensitive issues, data collection should be regarded well in advance. For example, if you are collecting data that seeks insight from individuals who may have been in a difficult situation or in a shameful situation, these people may not feel likely to share that information with you, especially if you like to employ an interview as a data collection method. Perhaps you're much better off trying to create a survey that would be distributed online and therefore the identity of people cannot be revealed. In this way, you would address a limitation related to data collection. But it's not possible to do so in all cases. Therefore, you may consider just admitting that there is a limitation. Another limitation could be related to the lack of resources. This is particularly the case if you're doing research that's related to the field of marketing. Typically, you would have a given artifact or a given product and you try to get data from people. You conduct observation, you just put down on a piece of paper how the person reacted after seeing this product for a first time, etc. But if the product you show them is perhaps of a lower quality than the one that actually is used out there in the industry or in the field, then you would get skewed data. Perhaps the customers or prospective customers would not be as excited or they would not approve that product as much as they would have done in the real life. So do consider this. Another limitation, again, to data collection is the time of the day that you're collecting the data. Sometimes this can impact the results. Trying to collect the data in the morning may be different from collecting the data in the evening. You have to consider all these aspects. Sometimes you cannot commit both, you know, morning and evening data collection, depending on the time frame of activities. So you could consider addressing this uh, or at least admitting this in the methodology. There are some things that you should never say in your limitation section. Let's discuss these really quickly. First of all, you should never say that you have some limitations or you didn't do something because you have the lack of time. Lack of time is never a limitation. Actually, it's always a limitation, but it's never something that we explicitly say in research. Second. You never downgrade the importance of the limitations you're discussing. Let's assume that you recognize something as a limitation, but then very quickly you say that it's not so important or it's not relevant to your research. And the third thing you should never mention in your limitation section is that your work has no limitation. Again, every research, no matter how good it is, has limitations. So it's much better to show them rather than try to sweep them under the carpet. You can be very sure that whoever is reading your work would be pleased that you have listed all the limitations and hopefully mentioned some ideas of how these can be addressed, controlled for, or mitigated. Or if none of those can be achieved, then at least they would know that the first step in trying to prevent a limitation from impacting the quality of your work is being aware of this limitation. That's why you should never hide limitations. You should never sweep them under the carpet, but you should present them. Now, let me know in the comment section down below, what is the limitation of your work? Also, I welcome you to let me know what type of topics you want me to discuss in this channel so that it can be useful to you. This is everything for now. Have an amazing rest of the day and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.